Hi, I'm Ashy. Today I'm going to show you how to draw and then paint each of these kind of traditional Christmas illustrations or icons. So I did nine different things and I had the combination of kind of some of the traditional red and green and then the kind of alternative tra but traditional colors with the blue and silver and um, added in like the cardinals which here in America at least are a very traditional winter bird and then again just some of the the common Christmas icons. Do you have any kind of favorite traditions or um, Christmas items that you really like? Um, for me one of them was a plate of fudge because my family does candy making but I did not paint a plate of fudge. I did think about it. Maybe in the future I will. But if there's, you know, something that's your favorite that maybe I didn't paint or that I did, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear kind of your favorite traditional Christmas item or like a family tradition that you may have. All right, let's get into how to paint these. All right, so let's jump right into painting some Christmas icons here. So I have just a mechanical pencil. I have my paints woken up here, some palettes, water, bunch of brushes. I have my metallic paints as well. Those are not woken up yet, but I have them on standby. Um, I needed eraser, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to sketch out all of these first and then go ahead and paint them. Well, not sketch out all of them, but I'm going to sketch and then paint. So let's first start with um, something that's kind of maybe, hopefully, more simple, and we're just going to do a Christmas gift. So I'm going to put this down here at the bottom and just make a line. So basically I'm making a cube here and I want it to be kind of on an angle. And then we're looking at it like straight from the middle so we can't see the top or the bottom. And then we're going to do a bow on it. Okay. So let's make a nice big bow on the top like it's coming from the middle here. So we kind of got to think about where those two are going to intersect. And then that's going to be where the middle of our bow is. And we're going to just do kind of a big loop. And then to make it look like it's ribbon, we're going to bring another line around and then come in and meet there. And then um, basically keep that coming around for the inside of this one. So we're seeing the outside of the ribbon here and then the inside of the ribbon down here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side and we can kind of make a little bump there to look like it's where it's wrapped around. But same thing on this side. So nice big loop. And then here you're going to see more the inside of this one. So come up and meet and then keep bringing it around. And then you're going to see a little bit maybe of the bottom of that. like so. Okay, so here's our first one and we're gonna now just take our kneaded eraser. I don't know why I say we. I'm the only one here. My two-year-old's sleeping in the next room. I don't know if that counts, but I'm just gonna kind of dab it on the paper to lift up pretty much all of that pencil and now it's just super faint. Um, don't even know if you can see it on the video but it's super, super faint. And then we're just gonna paint this. So let's make this like a silver and blue um, package. So I'm gonna do a nice, like fairly bright blue, um, maybe a little bit dusty. So I wanna add just a little bit of the opposite of blue, which is orange, just a tiny bit of orange to it to tone it down and make it more of a dustier blue. And then 
just took a little bit of water, ran it across the edge, and then I'm gonna paint in my box with that super faint blue. And I'm leaving space for where the ribbon's gonna be. And then we're going to just take a more concentrated version of that same color and tap it in along where it's shadowed. Okay, so we're going to make this side shadowed. Just lifting up some of the paint that got where I don't really want it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit along where the ribbon is just to make it look like there's a shadow kind of under the ribbon as well. And then kind of just soften that up because that was dry when I added it to it. So that was wet on dry and it made a nice hard line if that's what you're going for, but it's not, so I'm gonna lift some of that up. Or not lift it, but blend it out. And then I want this spot to be like a highlight right there. Okay, now I'm gonna get my silver paint here. I think I need a smaller brush. And just activate that paint. This, um, these metallics take maybe just a little bit more effort to activate, but after that they work great. And just add in silver for the ribbon. And then just dab in the tiniest bit of gray for a shadow on that ribbon. So this side again, this side of the box is shadowed. So we'll add in that shadow and then the underside of the bow would be shadowed. And then I'm just going to use that same gray to add 
the shadow under the box. Now, this dries pretty fast, so I can go ahead and add in some decoration on the wrapping paper now. So I'm gonna add in some silver snowflakes that you're not gonna see a lot because it's kind of silver on blue, but it's gonna have a little bit of shine. So you can see them, it's just kind of subtle. Which subtle is great because then if you mess up, it's not that big of a deal. And basically, I'm just doing little asterisks, so three, three points here. I'm not trying to be super fancy with these snowflakes. And then some are peeking out from underneath the ribbon, so you don't see the whole thing. And then just to kind of see if I can even out some of those hard edges on the gray. Blend it out a little bit, I don't know. Okay, well, it is what it is. I haven't practiced these before, so we're just going with it. But I think that's a cute little present. Gets the point across, it's a present. I don't know why I started on the right. I should have started on the left, but that's okay. Next, let's do um, let's do a snowman over here. So we're just gonna do like a little mound of snow there, and another one here, and then we'll put our snowman kind of on top of it. So we want just a little. That is a horrible start to a circle. <laughs> This side was good. So we're not doing a whole circle because it's sitting on the snow on the bottom. So we're just going to cut off that part and then we're going to kind of bring it around to the top, but not join it because then our next one is going to be the same and it's going to come down like that. And then same with our head. Okay. Now we want to add like a scarf, right, to our snowman. So there's one part, and here's the other part. And we'll make kind of a loop here, and then the scarf is coming out through the loop. And then you're gonna have these little ends, and we'll say it's like kind of blowing in the wind, okay? The buttons and the facial features and everything we'll do with just paint. And then he's gonna have a hat on, so we're gonna put a beanie hat on our snowman. Okay, so there's the fuzzy part of the beanie hat. And then kind of just a wobbly cone shape. And then we'll have a little fluff ball on the top. Okay, now I lift up that paint from the top of the head where it was blocking the beanie, or going through the beanie. There we go. And there's our snowman. So again, just gonna take the kneaded eraser and kind of dab it on there. I don't wanna dab it super hard because then it'll lift up almost all of that pencil marks because um, I'm not doing heavy pencil marks, but lift up most of it. And then we're gonna paint it. So when you're painting a white something, right, mostly you're painting a shadow. So for snow, that can be like a grayish color or it can be like a bluish color. Um, so I'm gonna do a nice super light bluish gray and a very light wash of that. And I 
he's going to look like he's just sitting on some snow here. And then just blend that out a little bit. And I can dab in, again, just a little bit more concentrated color to make that pop. And then same with the snow on the actual snowman. Got to pick which side is kind of the shadowed side, which we're just going to go with this side still because that's the the side of the box that we chose. And then because of that, I'm going to add a darker shadow here on the snow where the snowman's shadow would be. Okay. And then again, make that kind of blend it out so that it's not a hard edge there. Don't want any hard edges in our shadows for the snowman. And then just give them a tiny bit of gray on the other side where there's not, it's not as shadowed. And that's just so that you can actually see that edge. And then same thing, just blend it out very, very slightly. Okay. And then we're going to just do the same thing. Oop, that's brown. My uh, gray mixed in with some brown there. That's okay. And this is just Payne's gray with a little bit of whatever this blue is mixed in with it that I have. And it's a very, very watery version of that. And in here, you're gonna have just a little bit of a shadow from the scarf. So you can come down along that. And then just blend out and pick up some excess there that I just got a little bit too much water on my brush for. Okay. And then his head is going to be the same thing. A little bit of gray and under the edge of the hat. So I'm kind of, this one I'm kind of outlining first. And then just take a tiny bit more, put it on the left side of the face, and then just blend it out. And here's my snowman. He's a little bit lopsided, but that's okay. Maybe I wanted a lopsided snowman when I was building him, or maybe the wind blew. Right? He's outside, so the wind could have blown. All right. And I'm just going to kind of scrub out some of this extra hard edge there that I didn't want. And I can kind of pick up a little bit of that paint still. So you can kind of reactivate and pick it up again. And then add more if you want. So just to define these snow drifts a little bit more, just adding a tiny bit more gray to them. Okay, now switch brushes again, because we're going in for some detail on the scarf. Um, let me paint his buttons first. So I'm going to do black buttons so they're like coal. Now, because coal is not um, perfectly round, you can kind of just dab it in. Um, I'm almost using like a dry brush technique just to pick up some of the texture of the paper there and just dabbing in a little shape for some buttons and we'll do the eyes also while we're here in the black paint okay so there's a little eye there's another little eye and then I'm gonna make the mouth also and it kind of disappears into the scarf so you can't see the whole thing okay and while we're at it let's go ahead and do a nose and it's going to be a carrot 
nose. So make a nice orange here. My orange, I don't remember what the color is called, but my orange is super, super, super bright. So I'm just toning it down with a tiny bit of yellow to make it more of that carroty color. And then we're just gonna kind of make it a cone. So there's his nose sticking out. And it doesn't have to be anything super fancy, right? This is very small and you're not gonna see it super well. Okay, so now I wanna do a white pom-pom on the hat, which means again, I'm painting something white, so I just need a little bit of a gray color to create a shadow, and that will give the effect that there is a pom-pom on the top of his hat. So I'm just kind of blending out the middle, but all so that it has that tiny bit of gray, but also lifting up some of the paint so that it's not so concentrated. And then I'm gonna make the hat brim be like a gray and blue um, stripe. So I'm getting a little bit concentrated Payne's gray and going along the stripe and you want to make it look curved. So everything, you know, find a center point. That one's pretty straight. Everything on the left will be slightly curved out toward that way, like a C curve. And then everything on the other side will be like a backward C curve and it gets a little bit more curved as you go. Okay. And then I want to do, oops flinging water a blue color as well in between and since the gray is darker I can almost go over it a little bit as long as I don't do too many brush strokes and really reactivate the gray you're still gonna see it through the blue so as long as I just dab the paint in gently and don't scrub and reactivate again, it'll be good. Okay, now I wanna make like a chevron pattern on the hat. So again, tiny brush and just make little um, V's, I guess. And then let's put some gray in as well. And this is still wet, so it's probably gonna bleed a little bit and I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. Maybe I'll go back and clean up those chevrons a little bit after. Oops, that was too much water. That's okay. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely go back and clean up some of those chevrons. Okay, and then the scarf, I also want to do that chevron pattern. So let's get a nice concentrated blue. And this one we're going to do thinking about the shape of the scarf and how it's curved. So here it'll be vertical. And then this spot is coming down toward this loop. And then these ones are coming through and down. So now we're shifting to more a horizontal pattern. And if it's a little bit messy, 
that's okay. Especially because the scarf is supposed to be moving, right? It's kind of blowing in the wind. It's not static, it's not still, so you're not gonna see the chevron be like perfect anyway. Okay guys, so basically my camera decided that it would tell me it was recording, but then not actually record the part where I painted the snowman's arms and this little cardinal. And I feel like the cardinal was kind of important and maybe the part that may seem like possibly the hardest, though I think the pattern might be the hardest, but I just wanted to come back and redo it so that I could actually get it on video. So we're just going to put another little cardinal on um, this, the other arm basically. So I'm going to start with just a wash of red and do like a little oval sort of for the body. Okay. And then we're going to give him like this little belly basically. And then the head is a little circle that's on top of the oval. And then you just join the head to the body. Okay. And it kind of looks like a little pear shape. And then we're going to go in and just give him his little mohawk here. So just really light touch with the very tip of my brush and just pull some of that paint up toward the top of the painting. Okay. And then I'm going to give him like a little flick for a wing. So we're going to flick back that way and that creates his wing. And then for the tail, we're going to go down behind the branch. So it comes out here and then comes down behind the branch. Okay. And then just kind of go over that again, just to make it all um, just a little bit darker of a wash, but also a little bit more wet. Cause then we're going to drop in just like the tiniest bit of brown to the wings and give it just a little bit of contrast there for where his wing is. Okay. And then same thing for the tail, just a tiny bit of contrast for the tail. And if you don't feel like it's enough, you know, just keep adding. And I think I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of um, Payne's Gray as well, just to give that definition. Okay, so from there, then we are going to add the beak. So the beak on a cardinal is also red. So just go into that red paint again, again, just the very tip of the brush and very minimal water on the brush and just pull the red out into a triangle at the beak. Okay, now I'm going to go in with just some Payne's Gray here. You can use black, Payne's Gray, um, maybe some black too, actually, so that it matches my other one. The other one I use black. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'm just drying off my brush so that I have pretty concentrated paint here. And I did put some here on my palette, um, but I actually think I'm gonna go straight into my pan and get that black paint because I want it to be very concentrated and then I'm going to put in the little feet. So these little feet kind of come out from the belly. Basically they kind of tuck under all of his feathers. Okay. And that just gives him a little bit of feet. And then we have to do the little mask that the cardinal has. So it comes up to like a point behind the eye and then comes down Oh my goodness, my point got a little bit messed up on my brush. I think I might have used a smaller brush for this the last time. What brush do I have? Yep, I used this smaller brush. Okay, so try that again. 
get just a tiny bit of black and give them that little um, like winged eyeliner look and then bring it down around the beak and even with you know a little bit maybe of a mistake there with the the mask part he still looks like a cardinal right and so you can just go to town cardinals I mean birds actually are pretty easy to paint because they're just like an oval with a circle on top so I'm just gonna kind of put another one down here maybe looking up at the snowman and his friends I don't know if this will work we'll see Okay. Looks kind of like a squatty, funny cardinal, but that's okay. And this might be horrible. We'll see. Okay. And just a little bit of a wing and the tail. Maybe it's kind of hiding behind the snow there. Tiny bit of brown for defining the wing. A little bit kind of around the belly too, just cause. And then come back in and do the beak. And again, he's gonna be kind of looking up. And then for the black parts, I'm going to just give him like a little foot here and then you kind of, they kind of overlap because he's facing to the side a little bit more than the other ones. And then his mask. So little winged eyeliner look, come down toward the beak and just basically dab in that black. And there he is looking up at the snowman and his friends. And then just, just cause, put a little bit of a shadow behind him. On the snow, there's his little shadow. So that's how I did my cardinal. Now, maybe right in the middle here, let's do a little wreath. So I'm gonna kind of get some greens. I have greens already in my palette, so I'm just gonna kind of wake up what I have and use it. So add a little bit more yellow over here to get a brighter green. So now I have kind of three different colors of green there. And dry up my brush a bit because I don't want this to bleed a lot because it's super tiny right and I'm just gonna start with making like a little circle then I should probably do pencil first but I'm not going to so super super faint yellowish green and I'm just doing a very loose circle and then I'm just going to start putting greenery off of that circle. So some of them are going to be more like leaf shape. Okay. Some like rounded leaves. And I don't, I feel like I'm kind of evenly spacing them right now, which I'm going to try to avoid. I don't know how successful it will be on, again, I didn't practice any of these. I've never painted any of these things before. I've painted a snowman before, but I've never painted a wreath before. So 
We're just kind of playing around with it and seeing what we get. And again, it's it's small, so it's not like going to be super, super detailed. So I'm just adding like a little flick for the stem, I guess. And then we're going to go into a little bit darker of a green and kind of do the same type of stuff, maybe get a little bit of overlap in them. Make these sticking out a little bit more. Um, but everything I'm having kind of point the same direction, so I'm just making them all point this way, like they're going around in the circle. But some of them can be going more toward the inside, and some of them more toward the outside. I don't know. Okay, now I have some darker green here mixed up, and I'm going to do some like um, little pine evergreen stuff, so little needles. And I'm just using the very tip of my brush. I probably could hold it a little bit farther away from the end, but. Um, just kind of focused on control. Let me try to hold it a little farther from the end and see what happens. Okay. It should create a kind of a looser effect. Or maybe I'll just touch too hard and then get a little blob of paint. And that's always an option too. Either way, to do the very tip of my brush here, I'm holding it very vertically. Okay, I'm going to speed this up because I'm just doing the same thing kind of around and filling in. Okay, so now that it's kind of filled in, I'm just going to take a little bit of that same branchy brown that I did for the branches on the snowman, that's what it's called, and put in some branches that I can then add some berries to. And we're gonna do some red berries because it'll make it kind of pop against the green, right? Because they're contrasting colors. And these are super, super loose. So just kind of putting in some very loose brown shapes and then I'll just take that same cardinal color that I had and dab, well try to dab a circle because that was definitely not a circle. Let's try that again. And just very very small dots basically for my little berries. couple here right along the thing. Okay, now I'm going to put a bow on the top here and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to kind of come down. Needs to be more wet. Come down and flick out. Come down and flick out. And I'm going to paint in like the square part of the bow here. And I'm just going right over the 
the wreath, so you're probably going to see some of that green through it, but I don't really care. I didn't think about it before, so if I had, maybe I would have addressed that, but probably not. Okay, and then just a little loop up like that, and I'll leave that little bit of white space there and add just a tiny bit of black around the knot part. Okay, that wasn't a tiny bit, but that's okay. Sure. We'll call that good. I think that black just messed it up a lot, but that's okay. Lift that back up. Sure. Okie dokie. There's my wreath. It's not super full. I could make it full. Let's make my bow a little bigger, maybe. Bring it out more. Okay, maybe that's not going to be my favorite of this, but that's okay. We have a wreath. Now, let's make a Christmas stocking. And we're going to make that up here at the top. And I'm going to make a gray um, stocking holder first. Because um, our stocking holders are kind of like a hammered metal look. I guess. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can make your stocking holder look like whatever you want, but I'm going to make mine gray and it's going to be a Christmas tree shape. And super simple. Just some triangles. Okay. And then it comes out from the end and has like a little base to hold it onto the mantle and then there's a hook that comes down from it. There's my little stocking holder. So now to make the stocking, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna draw it in. So I guess I need to let that dry. So we'll come back to it. Let's make a Santa hat. I'm gonna use the same red and let's see if I can do it with a large brush. So I'm going to start by making a mm, wobbly kind of shape here. And then this is going to be a little bit wobbly too because that's where the white kind of fluffs up around it. Okay, so there's my wobbly Santa hat shape. And then it's going to be kind of flopped over to the side. So this side's a little bit higher. And then we have kind of a wavy line here. And then it comes down to the side. And here is kind of the front part where it's flopping down over the other part. Okay, so right here, we're gonna get a shadow under where it's flopped. Okay. Just kind of blend that down a little bit with these little strokes, give it a little bit of texture too. Okay. Good. Now, smaller brush and we're going to go into this gray color to create the fluffy white part. I don't know what it's called. Brim? It's not really a brim. 
I don't know. So I'll just kind of paint in an edge and then I'm just blending it out from there. And then I'm just going to kind of touch the bottom to lift up some of that paint. So I'm just using a paper towel here. And bleed in just a little bit extra on the shadow side. Okay. And then same thing for the little ball at the end of the Santa hat. So it's kind of like the puff ball on the snowman. Just kind of do a circle and then blend it toward the middle. And get a little bit of bleed from the red and that's fine. There's my Santa hat, pretty simple. Okay, now, let's see, that's dry so I can come back and draw in my stocking. Now I tried to do a stocking before on the Christmas cards and it turned out okay, but I didn't love it, like the shape. So I'm, I'm gonna draw it out this time and make sure that I'm happy with the shape. So we're gonna have the little opening here. There's the opening and it's hanging down from that um, hook. And then we have the top part of the stocking. Something like that. Okay, now the rest of the stocking kind of comes down and out. And this one kind of angles in slightly and bring it out kind of like a nice fat boot. Okay. Now this I'm going to do a um, white stocking with plaid. So it's going to be, we'll see, we'll see how I do with the plaid pattern. So let me just lift up that paint, not paint, that's not paint, that's pencil. And I'm going to start with just a little bit of gray, because again, I'm going to do a white one. So here it's going to be pretty much gray inside because it's all going to be shadowed inside. And then... The gray is going to be over here. And then we definitely want to define right there where that cuff ends. And then again, the gray is going to be down this side because that's where the shadowed side is. And then just wet and blend all that out. And just do a softer version of that on this side, just to show where the edge is more than anything. Okay, get just a little bit more. gray in here. Okay, now I want this to stay white, but I'm going to put an initial on it. So in green, I'm going to put my initial. So I am A. 
And this is going to be my stocking. Or it can be my daughter's, who is also an A. She starts with A, too. But we'll make this one mine. And so I'm just doing a nice blocky A there. Nothing crazy fancy. And let's go ahead and make the loop green, too. Just It'll stand out a little bit more than if it was um, white. And just that subtle gray color. There we go. Now, to make plaid, I'm gonna do red and green. So I'm gonna start with the red and just, um, I'm gonna need to make it be a little bit more concentrated here. Very good. Now, I'm just gonna take that and do um, some stripes, basically. And I'm really trying to be fairly precise here, make some of them closer together, and then make them farther apart. And again, this video is just about playing with it. I've never done any of these things before, really. I've never tried to, I've never attempted to do plaid. Um, but we're just gonna try, because it's fun. Right? That's what I gotta keep telling myself. It's fun. It's just fun. Okay, so we're gonna cross it now and do the same thing. Now, I'll take the green mix up a little bit more and more concentrated and do the same thing. So, let's kind of go down along the red. Okay, I think that's decent, and then same thing horizontally. Okay, well, it's okay. I like the shape better than my previous stocking. Um, let me take some of this same green color that I just mixed up and add it because it's a little bit darker. Um, just to make this A pop a little bit more and to make my loop pop a little bit more. There we go. There's my Christmas stocking. Okay, so now we're gonna do a Christmas ornament and it's gonna be um, let's see, do it right here, and we're going to make it kind of big. It's not going to be proportionate to anything. Okay, there's my circle-ish, and then we'll make the little top of it there. I don't know. Okay, so here's my Christmas bobble. I love that um, in Britain they're called bobbles. I think we should call them bobbles here in America. In my opinion, I just think that's a lot more fun. So if we can all just agree on that, that'd be awesome. Um, if you call them anything else besides Christmas ornaments or bobbles, let me know in the comments because Christmas ornaments is just kind of hard to say and I don't like it. So I'm going with bobbles unless I hear something that I like even better. I don't know what I'm doing here to my circle. It was a fine circle. I don't know why I'm changing it. Okay. Now, 
we're going to make this be a um, red Christmas ornament, but like a soft red. So I guess technically more like pink, but that's okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to paint it all red. And let's see how good I do it keeping this circle shape. And then same thing with the shadow. So I'm just trying to keep the shadows fairly consistently on this side of everything. Um, some of them, like this wreath, doesn't really have any shadows, but some of them have more shadows than others. So there's my red, and then we're gonna do a gold. Um, I have no idea what that part of the Christmas ornament's called, but the thing that connects the loop to hook it on a tree. Yeah, that's pretty uh, descriptive, right? And then I'm gonna do the best I can here to get it more concentrated on the left side to make it look like a shadow, but with this gold paint, it's a little bit hard to um, create that shadow. So we'll let that dry and then come back to it. Because I can't do the decorations on it until it's dry. Okay, I have two more things to do. So right here, I'm gonna do a mug of hot chocolate. So to draw the mug, I'm gonna do um, a basically um, almost like a rectangle, but rounded, right? So it's rounded on the bottom and on the top, and then there on the top, you're gonna see the um, liquid. So that'll be brown inside. And it's gonna have, I haven't decided, whipped cream or marshmallows will kind of depend what I feel like I can actually succeed with. So right now I'm leaning toward whipped cream because I don't know that I can successfully paint um, marshmallows, but we'll see. So there's my mug. Actually, I have three more things to paint because I want to do the mug. And I'm going to do a plate of gingerbread cookies um, and then an ugly Christmas sweater, the icon, right? So that'll be right here in the middle. So I guess I'll put the cookies right here and then the sweater up above. But let's start with this. Um, mug. So I want this to be polka dot mug and so I want the polka dots to be white which means that I need to preserve them and paint everything around it. So let's try I'm just going to draw in basically my polka dots and then everything around it, I'm gonna paint red. And we'll see how that works. I kinda don't want it to be red. I want it to be green instead. I'm gonna make it green. Planned on red, but I feel like there's getting to be too much red here, so let's make it green.
So I think that after that dries, that'll look decent for marshmallows. But who knows? We'll see. Okay, so now for the plate of cookies, I have to do a plate. So we are gonna do like a oval basically. Um, there we go. And then inside that oval, we have like the rim of the plate which you're only gonna see in the back half. Okay. And then for the bottom of the plate, we have coming down like basically from that rim area just a little bit of a dip. Um, my daughter and husband just got home, so you might be able to hear them a little bit on this video. <laughs> I think that that's good there for the plate. I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. So then I need to do the cookies on that, but let's come back to the Christmas ornament and then we'll go back to the cookies after. So let's see if I can get just a little bit more of a um, concentrated color of this gold. I guess I can go into the darker gold too and see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to do some gold berries on this Christmas ornament. I'm just taking the gold paint and making dots basically. In little kind of circles. So they don't have to be completely filled in dots. They can be, but they don't have to be. And do various numbers in different spots. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do like little lines from the bottom of them to kind of join them. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're just going to join them. All right, there's the gold berries. Now we're going to do green for the um, pine or evergreen branches. So let me mix up some more green here. And I want this to be a very nice deep green because it has to go over the red, first of all, and second, because evergreen branches are a very deep green. I have a bluish deep green. Okay. And then same thing here. Just make sure I don't have too much water on my brush. And then I'm just going to add in like little branches first and then I'll go in and fill them in after. Okay, so then we're going to just do like little I don't know, flicks. You 
something just a little bit smaller toward the edge, I guess. Or toward the end. A little bit bigger at the beginning and smaller toward the end. And they kind of curve up just a little bit. And they can even kind of overlap some too. And then add just kind of another layer over it once it's dry. And that'll get some variation in color. So wherever it's doubled, it'll be a little bit darker basically. So I'm just going to try to add another layer over here on the shadowed side on this green um, because a couple reasons. It should be darker because it's on the shadow too, right? It's not just the red that's darker, but also because the red is darker, it makes it look kind of a funny color on the green. So by adding another layer, I can make it look more green and less brown, I guess. Okay. So there's the Christmas ornament. Now we're gonna come back to our cookie plate and I'm gonna draw the cookies in because I, I should have drawn the plate too because it's a little funky shaped, but that's okay. I'm gonna draw the cookies in because I have no confidence that I can paint them without drawing them first. So here's the head of the gingerbread man. And then we have his arms coming out. Okay. And then kind of a body and a leg and a body and a leg. So this leg you can't see all of because it's going underneath the edge of the plate. And then we're going to do a little female gingerbread cookie over here. So this one will have the little dress. So come out like that. And there's our little angel or female gingerbread cookie. And then I'm going to lift up that pencil and then paint it. So gingerbread is brown and it's kind of a light brown with that kind of gingery orange color. So I'm just mixing burnt sienna and burnt umber to create that color. And then I'm just going to loosen it up and do a light wash first. And then we'll do the same for our other gingerbread cookie. Okay. Now we need to create just a little bit more of a um, darker color, it's like a little shadow. I can leave some of the lighter areas, the light wash that we had to create some depth basically so they don't just look like flat cookies. Okay. And then I am going to put little shadows under them too on the plate. So, a little shadow, and then a little shadow here, I guess. Kind of look like that. Let's do a shadow under the plate itself. Now we just want to add the little like candy features on the gingerbread men. So let's do some red eyes. Yeah. 
and buttons. And this one can look like she, we kind of did frosting for a skirt. There we go. Okay, I don't like the red eyes. Let's go back and do, add some blue. And that'll make them kind of a purpley color. But red looked creepy. I don't know why I thought red would be a good idea. <laughs> red lips though, that'll work. Let's do some red lips. Okay, that'll work. There's our little Santa cookies plate. Now, the very last thing is going to be a Christmas sweater. So, where'd my pencil go? I'm going to draw it here. And so it's going to have like a little turtleneck. But here's that kind of round spot for the neck. It'll kind of come down like this and be a turtleneck and then come out for the shoulders of the sweater and nobody's wearing it so it's not gonna have to be like perfectly shaped it's just kind of laying there and here's the little cuffs on the sweater okay And then it'll come down and have the body here. And it can be kind of wobbly. Okay, now. Make a neck here. Now all the decorations on it, I'm going to do just painting. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. But this is going to be kind of a traditional patterned, quote unquote, ugly Christmas sweater. So we will do some green to start for the cuffs and the neck. And I'm just going to do it kind of like stripes like it's knit and then same as whatever I talked about before with the stripes you want to make it look like it's curved a little bit and then same with the cuffs of the sleeves And then we're going to do a little cuff on the bottom too. So I'm just outlining it first for this one because it's a little bit bigger. And then doing like little stripes. okay with having some white space in there I think that's fine now I already have the green awake and everything so I'm gonna do some more green so I'm gonna have green chevrons going across here okay and one more kind of layer of that now the first one I was not very precise with but the second one I'm trying to follow the same path so going a little bit slower and then I'm going to do the same thing across here and Do I want to do a double layer there too? Sure. Okay. And then same thing with the second one maybe being just slightly more precise because I'm trying to follow 
the same path as the first one. Okay, and then I just want to put a little bit more of that same color on this one or on this side to make it again look just a tiny bit shadowed so it's not going to be very um, obvious I guess but just slightly darker on this side of everything okay now let's grab my red and I need to mix up more red so I switched to a bigger brush to mix up to hopefully make it a little bit faster but I'm still not super fast at mixing my colors like that color of red for this project. Now come back to my small brush and I'm going to make little um, diamonds here. Okay, just little tiny diamonds and this is just like <laughs> kind of I don't know, silly details, right? That I'm just kind of adding in that it's just for, you can make this as detailed or as simple as you want. Um, you can do whatever colors you want. I'm going with the traditional green and red here. Um, but if you wanted to go pink and purple, it wouldn't matter. Do whatever colors you want. And then below the chevrons, I'm going to do like a diamond dot pattern. And this one, like the faster you go with these dots, I'm finding the easier it is to make them actually look more round. If you try to like actually go in precisely and make them round, it doesn't seem to work very well. And so like some of these on the edge, you're not going to see all of all four dots. You might just see three or two of them. Okay. And then I'm going to do some green dots above the diamonds. sure I don't have too much water on my brush for this because these are tiny 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 and I'm just gonna do three here Just gonna make some green like bigger dots down here I guess maybe they look like little leaves or something I don't know but just to add and fill out a little bit more I don't want to add any more to the top though because I'm happy with what the top looks like Okay, and now just to add a tiny bit of shadow to the sweater, and I'm just going to add it to this side. edge a little bit but not so much shadow it okay 
now here's where I'm just going to try to blend it out slightly but not too much because I don't want to disturb the shapes that I made for my pattern. And there's my ugly Christmas sweater. Maybe we can add just a little bit of a kind of wrinkles in the middle here. There we go. Okay, and there are my Christmas icons. Thank you so much for watching. This was just such a fun and kind of relaxing exercise. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna use this for anything. This was just to practice and just to enjoy the season that's coming and spend some me time, I guess. I mean, I could definitely put these elements on something if I wanted to, like a Christmas card or even make it bigger and hang it up during Christmas season or put it on like a Christmas ornament or something. But this was just for me a fun exercise to get in the spirit. Um, in general, I have a hard time choosing my favorites, but I really like the Christmas sweater. I think that that's really fun and kind of silly um, take on the ugly Christmas sweater. And it was a lot, um, I guess, easier to paint than I thought it might be. And then I just, I mean, the snowman I love with the cardinals and the mistake that my camera made and cut out the me painting this cardinal, I think actually made it better because now I have the two extra cardinals, which I think is fun, like kind of seeing how they're interacting. So anyway, you know, things happen and sometimes they happen for a reason. So I think I like it better since that happened. Let me know which one your favorite is and check out my channel for a lot of other painting content videos and I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Have an awesome day. I just want to end with saying happy holidays and however you choose to celebrate this time, I hope that you spend some quality time with your family and friends and loved ones and that you make awesome memories.